I was sitting at my office at General Electric in Valley Forge in 1970, early 74, and I got a call and the caller said, uh, I'm calling from the National Library of Medicine. And I said, the National Laboratory of what? Because I couldn't believe a library would be calling me. Turned out to be Earl Henderson, who was communications engineering branch chief uh, at that time here. And uh, he described this fantastic project linking NIH and several uh, medical centers in the continental uh, U.S. to uh, remote villages in Alaska in a first ever telemedicine kind of uh, project. And so at the time I was uh, designing satellites and satellite earth terminals for uh, General Electric. And so I said, well, why not? Uh, you know, for a year or two I'll come down. And now it's been 43 years. I actually started at the Lister Hill Center uh, in February of 1975. I was flying on an American Airlines flight to the West Coast, and the American Airlines magazine had a cover story of Arthur Clarke and his 1945 paper that suggested the possibility of geosynchronous satellites to be used for communications purposes. And it went on to describe and use the name of the Lister Hill National Center for Biomedical Communications in it uh, because they were conduct had been conducting and were planning to conduct more satellite communications experiments for medical purposes. A lot of information was transmitted back and forth from healthcare workers in these uh, field sites to professors of medicine at, for example, the University of Washington, Seattle, and also people in the universities and at the Alaskan sites could listen to NIH folks who were assembled in the broadcast studio that my colleague Jim Main developed here at uh, NLM. We did thousands of hours of teleconferencing over satellite. In many cases, we had up to five different locations on the teleconference at the same time. And the technology was such at that point that all of the things that we take for granted now in teleconferencing, like doing FaceTime with your iPhone, all of those things had to be addressed specifically with specific equipment and specific technical operations. Following the experimental phase the research phase of this project, which is what it was always intended to be, private sector took over the operation. One of the companies was Western Union, as I recall, and the state of Alaska paid for continuing uh, the project. So by any kind of measure, it was an example of the government uh, uh, introducing and demonstrating uh, a new technology and then stepping back to allow others to take over. If you want to look at where those satellite experiments fall in the, in the timeline of the technology, they were unique. These were a series of communication satellites that were the first of their kind. Each one broke new technology boundaries as we went along. And for the Lister Hill Center, to be the, a primary um, experimenter and represent the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare in all biomedical communications matters, it was unique. And to say it was um, the, not only the first in the country, it was the first in the world because we were obviously leaders in satellite communications at that time. Mm -hmm.